stir these feelings deep within Because you gave me hope that changed my life and strength to help me through Because you
but sees through his impartial eyes. Just like a child, we want to love one another with our eyes. Just seeing the good in each other, just like a child. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning, they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, 
that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Good evening. We welcome you to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Lawrence Whitfield. Kindly sit for the tribute by Natalie Pierce. lots of days in the ground planting and harvesting and I would sometimes accompany him and Leandra also had this pleasure. When my dad was younger he also kept poultry and cows. He always reminded me how much I would love to name the offspring of the cows and got upset when they were to be butchered. That was a constant pain for me. How can we rear an animal and then kill it? My dad seemed to like hard labor. Even though farming was difficult he seemed to enjoy doing it. Another hobby of my dad that eventually became one of mine was watching cricket. At first I could not stand cricket, but after a couple times sitting with him and hearing his passion about the game, I started to watch it as well. Eventually, I caught the fever, but this was back then when the West Indies was really a force to reckon with. Now I barely pay them any mind. Dad also loved to listen to news and call in programs. He was very keen to speak about current affairs and what was going on regionally and internationally. He would often say, turn on the radio, let me hear the news or the death announcements. Dad was a strong man with a strong spirit. Strong spirit. He was very independent and he was a fighter, not physical, but in terms of his willpower. He would often say that he grew up in the church and he knew God and studied the Bible. I knew my grandmother would have brought up all of her children in the admonition of the Lord. It was always encouraging to hear him repeat a Bible passage with such ease. As I try to pack 71 years of life into this short tribute, I will use an acrostic to speak about our dad, Lawrence. L is for loving. My father was a loving man. His heart was so warm. When I was younger, my mother often told me that dad loved me, he was devoted to me, and he was all about me. I felt my dad's love, and I never doubted that he loved me. I know he was not perfect, and he made mistakes just like any of us, just like any parent, but I knew he loved me. He also loved his other children, Raymond and Leandra. If my father had one container of food, he would always say, taking this home for Leandra and Faye. I remember Raymond spending time with us when I was younger, and we would go over by our cousins, and we always had a ball. Dad enjoyed family gatherings. How many times we had family gatherings, and he, Stevie, Glenroy, Harcourt, would be at it. And I remember Arita was always the voice of reason. Nonetheless, they always made me laugh. I thoroughly look forward to those get-togethers. You can guarantee there would be action, food, drama, drinks, and plenty love. A is for appreciative. Dad was an appreciative man. If you pass and give him a glass of water, he will say thank you. If you pass and spend a minute with him, he will say thanks for coming. If you call him on the phone to check in, thanks for calling. It always amused me to hear him telling me thanks for coming or calling like I was a stranger. When he was ill and I told, my past, told him that my pastor and church members prayed for him, or ask for him, he would say, tell them thanks, and that effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. W, well liked. It was very interesting to see how many people gravitated towards Dad. He had a way of attracting people. During his illness, we, Lorraine and I, heard the nurses saying Lawrence is their boy, and that he was the guy who made them laugh. I must admit, sometimes I had to scold him for the comments he made to the nurses, but that was who he was. As a matter of fact, I think he was liked a little too much, especially in his younger days. C 
Sometimes people often tell me that I have a way of attracting people and approaching them. Maybe I got this from him. Who knows? So many people have told us that they will miss him and that he was a good person. R, reader. I grew up seeing my dad reading. When his eyes were good, he would be found reading. R, she comments, this was a family thing. We would all be passing those books around like a box of chocolates, and everyone would read them. Like Harcourt, in late Harcourt, he also liked a good black and white western. Don't talk about kung fu pictures. Yes, he also had me watching them with him. However, as his eyes deteriorated, this soon became impossible for him. E, easy going. Juice or groovy was very easy going. I try to remember ever seeing my father upset or angry, and I am unable to recall one or think of one instance. That man was so cool. If something was bothering him, he would say, it is what it is, or have a heart. Things that I, should, that I think he should be upset over, he never once was. He was always peaceful and contented. Even when he was losing his eyesight and his health was deteriorating, I don't ever recall him complaining. Yes, it was an adjustment phase, but he took it all in stride. Even with the dialysis treatment, the surgeries and hospitalization, my father's spirit remained strong, even if his body became weak. I often told people who inquired about my dad that he is a man who was always in good spirits despite his challenges. One day we visited dad in the QEH and I thought this was it for him. I thought I was seeing him for the last time. As bad as the situation looked and as sick as he looked, when I asked him how he was doing, he answered and said, he good. I said, dad, you can't be good. My heart was literally breaking and my father telling me he good. These were always his words. Dad was a special man. He deserved the best this world could offer. Noble. My father was a noble man. He was rich. He was not rich with money, but his qualities, kindness, peacefulness, gratefulness, loving, caring, compassionate, hardworking, were such that he would give any person of royal birth a run for their money. He was not perfect, not by a long shot, but he was a perfect father for me, Leandro, and Raymond. There were things that we spoke of that I didn't like or agree with, but I understood him, and I know that he did what he felt was best. Confidant. Raymond, my brother, said that dad, he confided in dad on previous occasions. He also indicated that dad gave him good advice when they had their one-on-one -on -one conversations. E, everything to us. As a young girl, I was a daddy's girl. I went everywhere my mom allowed me to go with him. Though through him, I spent time with his side of the family and formed a loving bond with them. They have been a rock for me, and we have been a rock for each other. I want to tell you all how good God is. While my dad was ill and during his last stay in the hospital, I got a chance to spend so much quality time with him. It was like getting to know him all over again. We talked, we laughed, we prayed, and we cried. Lorraine and I, all, Lorraine and I also spoke very often. Sometimes Lorraine and my father made sure that I did not leave his bedside unless we prayed. My father's death came as a shock to me. Yes, he knew that he was ailing. Yes, we knew he was getting down. Yes, we knew he was tired. Yes, we knew his body had been through so much. But still, I did not expect he would leave me on that day. Witnessing my father's passing away was heartbreaking, but I knew God was there with me. I felt his peace. When I spoke to dad on March 18, 2024 at 6.29 a.m., he sounded brave and strong. I had no idea that by Monday 8 p.m., dad's spirit would have left his body. My father died at home in the presence of Lorraine, Leandra, and myself. That memory will be forever with us. But I choose to hold and put priority on a type of man Lawrence Wainfield Greenwich was. He was a loving, appreciative, noble, wonderful, and an excellent father. And we are all gathered here today because of the love we had for him and the love he had for us. We love him and we will never forget him. Before I go, I want to thank everyone for their support. Family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, church family, nurses, doctors, and even some of the patients that he met throughout his illness. Lawrence Greenwich, Dad, you have fought hard and you have left us with precious memories 
that we will treasure and we will never forget. We love you, Dad. I now invite retired police officer Gradley Strong to come forward. Afternoon, church. Lawrence Greenis, alias Jules or Groovy. Retired Mountain Policeman number 775 of the Royal Barbados Police Force and now near Barbados Police Service. Lawrence and I first met on the 20th of October 1972, going to the Regional Police Training Center. The course number was 55. There were 18 Barbadians. And if my count is right, I can see about eight of us still in the audience. Constable Greenwich did remarkably well, earning a star for his performance in the police duties. Greenwich wasn't very good at drill or physical training, but he made it for it in the classroom. All 18 of us graduated on the 20th of April, 1973. Juice and I were sent to Central, where we were in the shift system. We both applied to the Monkey Branch under the leadership of Inspector Alvin Griffith. The training was rigorous. In their initial training at the Monkey Branch, we were starting to do some sort of jumping. Juice was riding a horse near Nancy. And as Nancy approached the jump, she picked up some speed. Jews let go of the wings and held on to the back of the saddle for bare life. And the amazing thing about it, you know, it didn't come off. <laughs> Jews' exploits were numerous. And to go into it was too time consuming. Jews and I were then transferred to District C. We became the senior man in charge of the horses. Juice and I would visit each other's home. No invitation was needed. I knew when he became ill, he was hospitalized. He would call me. And I would make sure I visited him in, in hospital once, once I was in Barbados. Constable Turner and Braffitt used to bring Juice to my house on a regular basis. Jews remained strong through all, all his illness. T to me, he was one of my truly great friends. All that is left for me to say, this is not goodbye. This is all reward. Until we meet again, sleep well, my brother, sleep well. Come forward. Good evening, each and everyone. This evening, we are gathered here to pay our final respect to Lawrence Menfi Greenwich. Lawrence was the third child born to Mary Greenwich and the first to Arby Greenwich and Mary Greenwich. He first received his primary education at Shrewsbury Primary School before moving on to Princess Margaret Secondary School. After Lawrence completed his secondary school, our mother put him to be in charge of us. This was a job that he loved very well, believe me. But 
the rest of us who grew up, all the other boys who grew up here, all of us was taller than him, and so he had to relinquish those reins. <laughs> he then moved on, his first job was a painter. He was young, he was strong, and he was big. And he used to paint more houses than the man would give him money. So Lawrence decided he done with that job. But the man was taking his sweetness for weakness. So he done with that job. He then applied to the Royal Barbados Police Force, now the Barbados Prison <coughs> Police Service, where he was accepted and was given the number 775. Lawrence worked at various departments in the police force, in various stations, but I think his true calling was in the mounted division. That is where he made a great impact. Somewhat so that I can remember he called me one day and said, um, Glory, come and join the, the mounted. I said, no. Nah. I said, first off, a horse ain't got no brakes, <laughs> and he ain't got no clutch, and I ain't going near a horse. I said, like the motorcycle. I said, Mr. Blaze called me, tell me, come to the motorcycle, and I ain't going there. Anyhow, Lawrence continued to be a very strong, respectable, likable person in the mountain division. He was admired by one and all. I can tell you that for what little I know, 32 Brooms, 778, 819, Bishop, to mention a few, would always tell me, boy, your brother is a boss. Your brother teaching me so much. He said, my way to teach us now, that for one Anyhow, that opening at District C and Lawrence was transferred to District C. As soon as he got there, there was a horse near Nancy, big Grammar. And let me tell you, that horse and Lawrence become so much friends. That they were going duty together, but you know, Lawrence had to go out on vacation. They had this little youngster, Vinnie Station Sergeant said, um, Greenwich, I want you to come back here twice a week and count the stars and exercise it. The youngster said, Man, sir, I could do that. You don't have to call him back for the vacation. I can do it. The Station Sergeant said to my man, I got four more horses down there. Pick any one but left Nancy. I warn you, do not touch it. But after he prompted him so much, he said, I, I got a right Nancy. See, sir, it's all right. You want her? Money, she's yours. He come in Monday morning, clean, dressed, nice, and out on duty. Nancy down the road, because Monday morning, he didn't know. But Nancy had other ideas. And she went straight at the first shop, and she stopped. <laughs> Mr. Brown shop. And he went over there, Nancy, Nancy, go along. Nancy stops, you move a ring. Nancy, move. So he prepared to look over and said, yeah, Nancy, she does another head. <laughs> she nodded her head. So the owner look at, the, the, the only shot look at the youngster and said, man, look, you, you gotta get your beer, you know? If you don't get your beer, she ain't going for the at all. After much persuasion, he decided he ain't gonna get, you wanna say, all right, man, I ain't want you here, cause you got people coming in, he give, give her a beer and Nancy, not her head approval and gone. Straight to Mr. Smith's office and stop. The young sister said, there's a trip with you every Monday. Mr. Smith come out and said, listen, Mr. Brown already called me, so I look, look, need the beer. Give she the beer and tell she go along. Nancy down the road to Mr. Ford's shop, but Mr. Ford don't home. So he got problems. He did beat him and, Nancy go along, Nancy go along, Nancy do something, and will not move. Nancy come now. Nancy will not move. He look, you know, and said, you see him? You wait till he get back up. Then he tells you that she want all four the licky clean off for the horse. And she do some look at him, back to this sea station. No, you all might not know, but this horse is so well trained that Nancy will never run in the middle of the road. She's gonna run to one side of the road. She ain't gonna block up the traffic, nothing sorted. She get back to the station, when she get back to the station, she do so and stop by the gate. Make her song, the station look and say, oh Nancy you ain't. But you ain't got no right, huh? He went and said, um, sir, you know what, Nancy now coming. But I ain't see the little young son top of his tears. I said, oh, God, I know this would have happened. <laughs> Five minutes later, he, um, the little policeman called and said, um, station, he said, man, Nancy threw me off. And I'm a bit hurt. He said, wait, what do you tell you? He said, man, but sir, man, you're going to send some boy for me. You're sending me to right? The CMN now says the horse, show you off and she can find she where in. 
You're going to find your way into God, selling the boy for you. You should listen to me. Lawrence was always a, a demote division. He was also a resident B officer. Anybody that knew him would know the kind of man he was. He was. I don't want to use big words because I can't explain what they mean, but he was a dedicated. He was a man that knew each and everybody in the area he was supposed to work. And each and everybody, even to the smallest child, knew Lawrence. And they were calling, he would go by them, everything you want to know at that area, ask Lawrence. And I guess that is something that I feel is missing sometimes. Anyway, one day Lawrence gets sick, took sick. And the residents in the area said, you know what I'm saying? We ain't see Greenwich. We ain't see juice at all. So they say, um, he got to be sick. Stay there and say he's sick. So when we open our door that day, they had so many people out there. Everybody. Who want to bring vegetables, bring fruits, who want to bring fruits, bring vitamins. I mean, out there, so it was like a shop. We could have opened a shop that day. But my mother said, no, let, 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 let go along. Nice woman she is. Lawrence was a very dedicated man. And Lawrence had a lot of hobbies. He had enough hobbies. He did like, when he was younger, he was the master pitcher in the area. As you get older, he did like farming. And I tell you, the biggest melon I've ever seen in my life came out of Lawrence ground. It was 65 pounds. I doubt it, I believe it. He also liked to cook. And when Lawrence cooked, he cooked a pot of food. And he got to eat all. So if you're there looking for some, God help you, because you ain't getting none. He also liked, he was a very good man when it come to Wi-Fi and computers and things. He was very good, very good at that. And he loved cricket. Above all, I feel one of his favorite things was ceramics. I can remember asking Lawrence to make, to make a ship for me. He asked me, how big you want a ship? I said, well, I want a ship boat. Just 12 inches and put four decks on it. Lawrence said, man, that's a boat. I'm going to make a ship for you. <laughs> he made a ship. It was two feet, seven decks, and he put a captain in it. He put the passengers. He put the whole crew. I said, well, well, I said, Lawrence, it's good for true. But once we was there, so he told me, well, Glenroy, you hold on. Um, I want to finish making this. Um, he was finishing up two mice and two lizards. And I was watching him. I remember how he was going about it. But you know, two cats was also watching. <laughs> and I placed my ship behind there. And without the drop, the two cats jumped on the table, knocked my ship on the ground, bracket it up, run it to ground. Take out the two mice and run off with it. <laughs> I said, well, 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 I said, Lawrence, they go for two dog. Even the cats eat them mock, mock mice and mock lizard and thing. He was that good. Anyone who know him, but know Lawrence was a he kind of person. He was nice. He was loving. I have never, for any time you buy, never hear Lawrence utter a bad word. And I know Lawrence all the days of his life. He was a joy to be with. Fun loving, love cricket. And I could tell anybody in here today that I personally believe that he didn't achieve the accolades he should have achieved whilst he was working. He was too good a person to be not receiving those accolades. That's my belief. At this stage, Lawrence patrol Barbell for 34 years. 34 beautiful years, and he never complained. He never asked for anything. He was so contented with what he got and what he didn't get. That's the kind of person I know my brother to be, a very contented person. At this stage, I would like to thank the doctors and the nurses at the QEH, especially A1 and C5, they produce, they are, they are looking for Lawrence, especially those nurses. Also, the personnel from the district, St. John Polyclinic. This was where he would go for his dialysis. Although Lawrence was, he couldn't see. First, he couldn't see, he was blind. He was a diabetic, very bad diabetic, and he was on dialysis. And Lawrence was sick, and he would go up there, and he would sit down 
with the rest who was in a little better position than him because there was only for Dallas, but he had everything back. And he would go out there and he would tell these people about his journey and the force, how he do this and how he do that. You know, it, it was a joy to hear him talk about the force. He would always big up the police force. He would always say, Glory, this is where I made my bread and butter, and this is how I got what I have today. He was very contented. I also like to thank the personnel at the UE because that is where Natalie worked and was very sympathetic with her during her loss. Also, Natalie might not want me to say this here, but I have to say it. That evening, the 18th of last month, when Natalie was there feeding her father, I guess it's a dish we'll never forget because he actually died in her arms. And they had such a bond from birth to death. I also like to thank all of you in here who has come in our time of grief and assist us off with it. You are much appreciated. And from the last but not least, I know that Lawrence Greenwich is going to be a, a better place where he will be enjoying his life. He'll be meeting up with his mother, who was a very ardent Christian his father, sisters, and brothers. So I want to say goodbye, my brother, from, my, from the immediate family, friends. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the members of the police who came to us and with our time in need. The past and the present is good to see you. You all made the difference. Thank each and all of you. And we stand for the opening hymn number 491. What a friend we have in Jesus. Arms to take and shield thee. 
Thou wilt find us again. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I receive for the first Bible reading. Good afternoon. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. For everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to reign and a time to sue, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Here ends the reading. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 121. Kindly of stand for the chanting of the psalm. for the second Bible reading. Good afternoon. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if this had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me, though he die, ye shall he, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. Here the reading. The hymn before the sermon, number 497, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. This is my soul, raising my Savior all the day. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bow our heads in your presence, giving you thanks for the life of your servant, Lawrence. We thank you, God, also for the life of your son, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. It's through him that we have life everlasting. And so we stand on that promise. We stand on your faithfulness. We stand because we know that you are God, and above you there is no other. And so now come and speak to us in a special way. Cause me to decrease as you increase, and your word will go forth and not return void. Through his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Let me first of all extend condolences to the bereaved family and friends of our dearly departed brother Lawrence. And as I heard the tributes, and you heard and got a snapshot of the person he was, as the tributes were very colorful. And so we give God that he didn't just pass away, but it, he lived. And the blessing and the memories he's left behind. That being said, it's still difficult to deal with the enormity and the reality of death. I often tell a story so I'd also like to recognize the presence of the members of the Barbados Police Service here today, the officers, and of course, past officers as well. But there's a story I often tell about death. How there was a man home, and he heard a knock at his door. And the man opened the door, and there was the angel of death outside his door. The man recognized the angel right away, the shop. And so he said to the angel of death, come inside, have a seat, relax. Death was kind of caught off guard with that. He went inside. The man said to death, do you or would you like something to eat? Death said, uh, okay, sure. Now it's a Sunday afternoon. And we know what the food looks like on a Sunday afternoon. And so death gave him some rice and peas. The man gave death some rice and peas. Of course, you must have macaroni pie. A diabetic shouldn't be eating that, but nonetheless, macaroni pie, some mixed veg, some roast chicken, and of course, you must have a piece of, don't play you don't know, you must have a piece of, thank you very much, a piece of pork, and death ate and ate. And after death ate, you know what happens, right? Death fell asleep. And a man got death's book, and he looked at the book, and right there at the top of the list, was his name. I told you the man was sharp. So the man erased his name from the top. Went all the way to the back of the book, the very end, and wrote his name <laughs> last. Death eventually woke up. And the man said to Death, How did you sleep? Death said, You know, I this is strange. I slept well. You know, no one has ever invited me into their home before. That's, that's different. Death said to the man, this is just totally different. I, I feel different. He said, I feel so different. I want to do things differently. Usually I start from the top and work my way to the, to the end and the bottom. Today I feel so different. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way to the top. What am I saying to you, friends, this afternoon is that we cannot run away from death. Death is a great equator. Today is our brother Lawrence. And one day, one day, if you live long enough, if I live long enough, we will meet death as well. No matter how much makeup you put on, no matter how much you exercise, no matter you're good looking like me or look different, no matter if you're rich or you're poor, no matter whether you're white or black or slim or fat, you can't run from death. We cannot escape death. And so much has been said about death through the centuries. The great philosopher Socrates 
He adds to the conversation about death. He says, the hour of departure has arrived. We will go our separate ways. I to die, you to live. Which of the two is better? Only God knows, he says. And today where I want to focus my attention for a few minutes is on Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. Because Paul also adds to this conversation about death. Here's what he says. We know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, that we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Paul uses this imagery, this idea of a tent, to talk about death. Now, if anyone knew about tents, Paul knew about tents. He was a tent maker. This was his livelihood. And so it's not strange that he used tents to describe the phenomena called death. Now, I'm not a tent maker. But I was a boy scout at one point in time, and a member of the Duke of Edinburgh Award scheme. And so I've supervised countless camping expeditions. And so I know a little about tents, and I, I know that there are two things we can take away from tents. One, that there will be wear and tear on tents. There will be wear and tear, and that tents are not our permanent homes. I remember as a young boy scout, when we got our new tent, you know when things new, you smell it, only me, and they smell new, and we smelled our tents, and they smell new. They were strong tents, and we took great joy in setting these tents up. And when the rain came, and we were out camping and we slept in these tents. We did not have to worry about the rain. The rain would just beat on top of the tents and we heard the rain, but we were safe on the inside of the tent. We remained dry. We didn't have to worry about the bugs crawling into the tent because the tents were new. And we used these tents for years and years and years. And after using them so long, they began showing signs of wear and tear. And friends, sometimes these tents, they will develop holes, and our tents develop holes. <laughs> and when it rained, there was more water on the inside of the tent than outside because of the wear and tear. Before, when the tents were new and when they were young and in usage, there was no need, no worry about bugs crawling in. Now, because of the wear and tear, the doors can't close properly, so we got somebody at the door keeping guard so bugs can't get in. Because of the wear and tear of tents. And, and Paul is here trying to remind us of our own mortality, that we are like tents. You know, if you were to think about when we were younger, some of us perhaps could run like Hussein Bolt. But now we walk. And sometimes we walk slowly. Sometimes when we were younger, we could jump walls. <laughs> Anybody remember those days? But now we walk through gates because we can't jump walls no more. Sometimes we can stay awake all night, go fatting and what have you. We didn't fall asleep, we went straight to work. Now as soon as you sit down, we're not, like, we're not even eating anything. We sit down too long and we're falling asleep. Because we are like tents experiencing wear and tear. Once upon a time, our bodies were strong like tents. 
And then as we face sicknesses like diabetes and high blood pressure and cancer and this and that and the other, it takes a toll on our body. And Paul says as long as we're in that tent, we will groan. Sometimes, if we were to be honest, when arthritis begins to hit, and we begin to feel the pains of arthritis, we too begin to groan as we are in this tent, living out this tent experience. Time takes its toll. Paul is reminding us that this tent experience there will be wear and tear in life. There will be ups and downs, struggles in life that will take our to its toll on us. It's part of this tent experience. But it goes on to speak about the tent in another way. That the tent is not a permanent place. A tent is where you are temporarily. Because we have a home somewhere else. You know... This was kind of rewarding for me because in my tent experience, sometimes you're around some people you don't like. Well, only me, not you. You love everybody. But it was okay because I had a home, a permanent home somewhere else. I would put up with the rain and the wear and tear in the tent experience. That's okay because I had a permanent home somewhere else. We go through our tent experience understanding that this tent experience, this world experience is not our permanent experience. That our Christian faith demands of us and tells us and encourages us that we have a permanent home somewhere else. This is why Paul says, if this earthly tent be destroyed, we have a building not made with hands. No contractor built those, that building. So we don't have to worry about the longevity or the strength of that building. It's not made with human hands. He says it is eternal in the heavens. How do we know? Paul, I believe, stands on the words of Jesus who says, I will go and prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. And in that permanent place, there is no worry about wear and tear. In that permanent place, we don't have to worry about diabetes. We don't worry about cancer. We don't worry about high blood pressure. There are no undertakers over there. It's a permanent home. In that place, there is no one stressing us out. We don't have to worry about the stresses and the cares of life in that place. It's a peaceful place. Most importantly, it is a permanent place. Paul is explaining to this young Christian community the idea about death. And he likens death to a tent experience. First of all, starting with life. That in this life, we're going to be like tents. And this body and this soul that is, is going to be housed in a tent. And the tent or the building or the housing in which capsulates our soul, will experience wear and tear. But he encourages us, us to know this, that this body, this body is not our permanent home. That there is a place in the heavens, not built with hands, there is a place that our big brother, Christ Jesus, went ahead to prepare for us. 
And for that, we give God praise and glory. And we stand on that blessed hope that there is a place. I pray that God will strengthen the bereaved family, friends, and this your time of bereavement. I pray that he strengthens your faith so that through your faith, you will hold on to the hope, that blessed hope. I pray God pours upon you his grace and yet even more grace. Amen. I invite you now to stand with me as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 6, page 6 in your leaflet. I believe in God. The intercessory prayers, your response will be, hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Yes. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your love and care that casting all this sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Father of all, we pray to you for Lawrence and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And may he, with all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I now invite Superintendent Leon Blaise to come forward. You may sit. Good evening, Church. I guess, I guess as uh, a former member of, a former comrade of Lawrence, uh, I was encouraging and trusted to say a few words. Lawrence, like Grantley and I, 
we went to the regional police training center in, uh, in the 20th of October, my birthday, 1972. Lawrence had a, a very, he, he was a, a very funny on, on, on the parade square, but not when he get in the classroom, as Granny said. He's a very intelligent guy when he get in the classroom. Actually, he's, his, his grades were exceptional, certainly exceptional. And when, he, when we came to the end of the course, he had a majority of the stars because he was a very intelligent, intelligent officer. We, we, I remember when he was in the hospital, I went to visit him because I heard that he was in the hospital and he couldn't see. And while he was there, he brought in his meal. I said, I said Lawrence, so what, what has going to happen? He said, well, I can't see. I said, no problem. I will help you. And I fed him. And he was so grateful. He said, thank you, thank you. He said, you do a lot for me this evening. I can't help, help but thanking you. And this is the sort of person he is, very humble and very thankful for all the things that I have in life. Lawrence and I, we work at District A together. I was working in uniform. He was in, in you know, Brown Beating Patrol. And he was on the monk, in the monkey side. So I know of a lot of instances, some of the things that Glen Roy mentioned, and, but not what, not this, not, Glen, not Granny mentioned, not what Glen Roy mentioned, because I'm not sure what the horse and feed him with the mayor. <laughs> but Lawrence was a, a sort of friend of ours. The other comrades in the back sitting, we're all very proud of that Glen, we met Glen, Granny, Mary, that we met Lawrence as a friend and a comrade. And 52 years ago, we joined the force. We went to the training school, and we have regrets of, have no regrets of meeting him as a friend. And he will remain a friend for us for the remainder of our lives. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to say those few words. The offertory hymn number 672. Oh Jesus, I have promised. This collection is taken in Lawrence's memory and to continue the ongoing work here at the Church of the Holy Trinity.
No, Mrs. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. into paradise may the angels lead you at your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city jerusalem
It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see. You Why'd you have to leave so soon? Yeah. Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? 'Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see. Feeling so cold. I'll be waiting right here for you till the day you're home. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. So let the light guide your way. Yeah. When I see you again, we've come a long way from where we began. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see. Why'd you have to leave so soon? Yeah. Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? 'Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. 
We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. How do I breathe without you? I'm feeling so cold. I'll be waiting right here for you till the day you're home. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. So let the light guide your way. Yeah. Every road you take will always lead you home. Oh, oh. We are here to meet at the house for tomorrow. When I see you again, we've come along. From where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you again When I see you again Ooh, When I see you again When I see you again It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again, when I see you Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt Carry on It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Give me all the strength I need To carry on So let the light guide your way Yeah Every road you take will always lead you home. Oh, oh.
When I see you again, we've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Why'd you have to leave so soon, yeah? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when Things I in needed the you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you Without feeling much worse I know you're in a better place But it's always gonna hurt
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God in me he raised Jesus Christ from the dead but also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit you will show me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy in your right hand are pleasures forevermore in the midst of life we are in death to whom can we turn for help but to you Lord who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, 
holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at the last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We command it to Almighty God, our brother Lawrence, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Lawrence and we ourselves, may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their faith, course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness. And in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful depart it. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace.
On page 11 to him, when peace like a river, all the other grayside hymns will be played unannounced. You start with the hymn, 757 Mission Praise, when peace like a river.
Let us pray. Father of all, by whose mercy and gracious saints remain an everlasting light and peace, we remember with thanksgiving those whom we love but see no longer, and pray that in them your perfect will may be fulfilled through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Use it 
for your glory Lord, I offer my days to you Lifting my praise to you As a pleasing sacrifice Lord, I offer you my life Things in the past Things yet unseen Wishes and dreams that are yet to come true All of my hopes All of my plans My heart and my hands to you Lord I offer my life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory Lord I offer my days to you lifting my praise to you as a pleasing Sacrifice Lord, I offer you my Everything I've been through Use it for your glory Lord, I offer my days to you Lifting my praise to you As a pleasing sacrifice Lord, I offer you
us is given to 